welcome everyone. One more uh, meeting of our uh, CNCF uh, uh, and research and user group. Uh, today we'll have an awesome presentation uh, by Aldo covering uh, an update on Q and especially multi Q, which is uh, quite recent and pretty exciting. Um, we will also, I just have one reminder, is that uh, we are currently looking for a, a new lead or even leads. We can have uh, more than one added as well for the group. Um, just a quick reminder what, what this involves. I will ping again on the channel as well, but it's mostly about uh, ensuring we have a healthy agenda for, for our meetings. Uh, so uh, proposing topics, um, uh, like following and uh, getting speakers to to present on the different topics. Uh, if you need any additional information, let me know. And if you would like to to help out, um, please come forward. Uh, it would be great. And uh, with that, I think we don't have anything um else okay i see a few people indicating they're uh, the first time so we can do a quick round so i see feng ping do you want to introduce yourself yeah uh so yeah my, uh, my name is feng ping who yeah i work at u chicago uh, at the uh uh you know Atlas, uh, you know, analysis facilities, and we have a lot of um, Kubernetes clusters installed. Um, and uh, yeah, uh, so we wanna, I wanna learn about, uh, more about the very interesting uh, this um, queue and uh, you know fair share among all the tenants and that stuff. Thanks. Amazing, welcome. And we also have Lucio from NFN. Yes. Uh, hello. Uh, yes, my name is Lucio Anderlini. I work uh, in Florence uh, at INFN and uh, since uh, about, about one year uh, we are trying to exploit Kubernetes uh, for uh, machine learning development and uh, that's, that's what we are, uh, well, my, that's why we are interested in these developments. Amazing, welcome, thank you. And then we have Saurab, also first time. Hi, I am Saurabh. Uh, I'm from ThoughtWorks. Um, we recently um, been involved with a project where we are exploring submitting batch jobs to a Kubernetes environment. And I am interested to learn more about Q and multi Q. And uh, looking forward to the session. Very good. Thank you and welcome. All right, so I think uh, Aldo, I'll just pass it to you. I'll stop sharing here and uh, yeah, looking for, for the presentation. Thanks again for, for presenting. All right, perfect, thank you. Thank you, Ricardo, for the invitation. Let me see if I can share my screen. Um... Mm, yeah. I believe it's visible. Okay. Yeah, looking great. All right. Well, hello, everybody. My name is Aldo Kulkikondor. I am one of the two maintainers for, uh, actually three now, uh, for, for the Q project, which is uh, part of the Kubernetes. Um, it's part of the Kubernetes uh, six projects. Um, so yeah, uh, I think it's the first time, maybe not the first time, I think I've mentioned this project before in this audience, but uh, if anything, it's been a while. So uh, thank you, Ricardo, for inviting me to provide an update. Um, so I'm going to assume that most people are not entirely familiar with Q. Um, so I'll give a, <coughs> a quick overview. Um, so what 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 is Q in the first place? Um, well, it's a, it's a job queuing system uh, that uh, we we made it Kubernetes native, meaning that it doesn't require any external databases uh, or anything. It just uh, relies entirely on the on the Kubernetes API 
to storage state uh, and it plays and it plays well with all the existing Kubernetes components, um, namely the job controller, the scheduler, cluster auto scaler, so on and so forth. Um, th that is uh, kind of the goal. Uh, so what, what does it offer? Um, we offer a quota management system um, that it is, you, you can express it uh, through a two level, um, uh hierarchy um, so you have basically your queues and then the queues can be grouped in in in, in one uh cohort what we, we call cohort uh and within this cohort the queues have semantics for borrowing meaning if i'm not using somebody else can if i'm not using my resources somebody else can take them for a while uh and fair sharing so uh this is kind of like the new feature um, so I'm going to be explaining a little bit how the fair sharing mechanics work in queue. Um, we, well, uh, within, within these queues, we have priority based ordering and priority based preemption. Um, next, uh, which is, uh, next we have a concept that is maybe not, not that common among other queuing systems, uh, the concept of fungibility. So um, <clears throat> you can think of uh, fungibility uh, as the ability to uh, to use one kind of resource or another, depending on the availability. So typically, our users would uh, define the first preference to use uh, a reservation, and then they can burst. Uh, if the reservation is full, they can uh, burst the jobs to the to the next flavor. Uh, which could be on-demand spots or uh, or other things. Um, Q is uh, Q was built around the job API. Nevertheless, it is uh, um, compatible or it's it extended support for uh, other APIs in the ecosystem. Uh, Jobset is is another Kubernetes six project that was kind of started also in parallel with Q, and uh, uh, it allows you to define groups of jobs um, that do a computation together. Um, it could be because you have a worker, sorry, a driver worker model, you know, uh, uh, like uh, in MPI, for example, you have a driver and then the workers, or it could be, uh, it could also allow you to define um, um, some some form of topology. Um, so, for example, you have GPUs or TPUs tightly coupled together uh, in a rack or, or some other form, and you can send a job to that rack and another job to another rack, another job to another rack, but then they all form part of the same computation. Uh, so that that's job set. Um, but we we also have uh, support for non Kubernetes projects like uh, Kubeflow, namely. Uh, actually, this this is incomplete. MPI job was the first uh, Kubeflow uh, job we supported, but today we support every every Kubeflow API, TensorFlow, PyTorch, Paddle Paddle, uh, all of them. Um, then we have the support for Ray jobs uh, Kube, through KubeRay. Kubray array cluster, and I think the latest addition was the plain pods, um, which I'm, I'm gonna expand a little bit on later. Um, and Q, uh, Q also allows you to uh, extend it. Uh, actually, we have two mechani mechanism mechanisms for extending. Uh, one of them is for uh, supporting different CRDs. Um, so if you if you you have your own like in-house job definition as a CRD, you can integrate with Q um, without having to modify Q code. Um, you can run a, a small controller uh, in your binary that um, knows how to interpret the commands from Q um, to start and stop a job 
uh, or even at, at node selectors, things like that. Um, so that, um, yeah, basically, uh, you can take the the overall decision for the job and the implementation details go to, to this custom uh, adapter. And we have seen uh, actually recently a uh, project called Flare reach out to us. They had developed um, one, one of these uh, adapters, uh, which they call the app wrapper. Um, so uh, they were collaborating with us recently to, to um, improve our documentation around, around exter external support. So now, now if you go to the queue documentation, you will find some examples there or some more clear, clear guidance on how to develop your own integration. Um, so yeah, that has been a happy collaboration with them. Um, so I'm gonna, uh, I think I, I won't be taking questions yet. Uh, after, maybe after this one, this slide, I'll take uh, a few questions. Um, <clears throat> here, I want to uh, show how Kubernetes and Q work together, because uh, Q is, is is in, is not replacing Kubernetes whatsoever. It's working with it, uh, and this is the the uh, let's see the the life cycle of, of a job. Uh, actually, before before we create a job, uh, before a user creates a job, there needs to be some administrative uh, or management tasks. So, namely, the the uh, cluster administrator would create what we call flavors, uh, resource flavors. Uh, which is the the kind of the kinds of resources you have, and the queues uh, to define this uh, separation. You know, each team has a queue, and each queue has a certain amount of quotas, um, and uh, these queues belong to cohorts, so they can share resources between each other, and so on and so forth. So that's step one, um, or step zero as as I would like to call it. Uh, now, step one is actually the researcher um, creates a, a, a job. Uh, here, for the most part, the experience doesn't change from what from like what the normal Kubernetes usage is. You just create a jo uh, job YAML, which could be, uh, again, the job API, could be Qflow, job set, and so on and so forth. You just create a job. Uh, with the only difference is that you add one label, uh, which indicates the queue name um, that you you want to target. The, that's the only difference. Now, uh, based on the running jobs the, and the available quotas, queue would uh, run the logic to determine whether this job should run or should wait. And um, and whether we need to do some preemptions, for example, because there is no quota, so we need to preempt some running jobs. Um, so that's the first step uh, where Q takes a stab. Um, here uh, we run, we kind of diverge into some optional uh, uh, configurations. Um, one one of the possible uh, extensions uh, of Q is to communicate at this point with cluster autoscaler um, to provision uh, additional nodes. Uh, well, it could provision, or it could just check uh, whether there are uh, available nodes in the cluster, or uh, you know, scale up if needed um, to uh, to accommodate this this job. Um, the 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 uh, important aspect here is that uh, this provisioning uh, is atomic, um, as opposed to the previous um, 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 behavior of cluster autoscaler. With it would it would just scale up one pod at a time. Here we are scaling up uh, for the entire job. Um, so that's one possible extension. Um, the other possible extension is actually multi queue. So at this point, uh, queue, when configured for for multi queue, can delegate 
running this job in a remote cluster, uh, which we call the, the worker cluster. Um, so Q can submit the request to multiple um, to multiple jobs, uh, sorry, to multiple clusters um, to, to determine whether these clusters can run the job. If they are able to, if one of these clusters is able to run the job, they will reply back and, uh, and reply back that there is capacity in that cluster. Um, and well, the, these extensions, we, we name them admission checks. Um, so these are two extensions that are part of the Q, of the Q uh, project. However, the API is extensible enough that you can define your own admission checks. Um, but uh, we haven't seen any examples of that yet in the wild. Um, so after this, um, optional components have determined uh, that um, uh, the job can run or that there is enough capacity uh, either in this cluster or in an external cluster, um, Q will uh, basically start the job uh, or declare that the job can start. Uh, uh, and in this, at this point, it might inject some particular node affinities. For example, if the cluster autoscaler uh, produced a scale up with dedicated nodes, it would indicate which nodes should be used or which group of nodes should be used. And uh, Q would inject this node affinity. Um, um, yes, and, and, and we also have, well, the, the flavors uh, can also have affinities. So if you have a reservation, here is where we just where we where Q decides, okay, it will go to a reservation, or it will go to uh, on demand, and um, those affinities will will be injected to the job. Um, next step is your everyday Kubernetes. Uh, at this point, Kubernetes creates pods for this job. Um, then, if you didn't have the optional cluster autoscaler provisioning before. Here is where cluster autoscaler would provision. Uh, in this case, it would be like uh, one pod at a time. And um, then Kubernetes scheduler would uh, schedule the pods to the nodes. And finally, Kubernetes will run the pods in, in this, on these nodes. Um, so, that's how Q, well, you can see all the green, all the green boxes are uh, what Q is adding to a Kubernetes system. Um, and you can see the rest is, is your everyday Kubernetes. Um, I can take some questions here if, if there are any. I have a quick one. So it, it, you mentioned that there's also support to use directly pods. So in that case, uh, all the the upper part is is uh, ignored, or how does it work? Um, yes. So for pods, we have um, special feature in Kubernetes, which is called scheduling gates. Um, so what happens is when, when the researcher creates pods in this case, uh, we have a webhook that prevents this, these pods from running, um, by adding a gate, um, then Q ad administers this, this gate. Um, so, um, so you have the pods. The pods are grouped in um, the pods are grouped. Um, well, if you are using pod groups, um, and Q takes the decision, or even it could produce the scale up, uh, or well, multi Q is not supported yet for pods, um, but uh, it could produce a scale up for the entire group of pods. And once 
so once this, these two components have determined that the job can run, uh, the, the step here is also the same. Uh, basically, we in still inject node affinities as necessary, but instead of starting the job, we remove the gates, the pod gates. Okay. Uh, Makes sense. And so, yeah, there is no more pod creation. We just remove the gates. Um, and then at this point, cube scheduler will uh, take over and kubelet uh, here. Um, so yeah, it's makes sense. slightly different, but still the same. Um, any other questions? Yeah, I don't see any right now. Okay. Yeah, here uh, maybe it's a good moment to highlight that the Q team uh, and overall the Kubernetes community and especially the, the working group batch within the Kubernetes community <clears throat> has, been, has been working over the years to <clears throat> introduce these improvements uh, that would allow Q to just play along. Uh, in the case of pod groups, uh, we added the feature that I just mentioned. Uh, we added the, the, pod, the scheduling gates. If we didn't add scheduling gates, pod support would not be possible in Q. Um, and same with cluster of the scaler. Uh, cluster of the scaler didn't have the bulk provisioning cap capabilities. Now it does, uh, and the, this was all to support Q. Um, so whenever we found a gap in Kubernetes, we went and fixed it instead of uh, forking components. Um, to, and so we were able to keep the, the, the separation of concerns uh, in the system. Okay, um, I'll move on to the next to the next slide. Um, here I, I just wanted to show an overview of of the multiple multiple concepts in terms of API API objects um, that allow Q to to function to communicate its uh, its uh, decisions and so on. So first of all, of course, we have a namespace um, for, uh, well, each team, each team can have its its own namespace. Now within the namespaces, a user creates a job, right? Um, could be, again, could be a job, could be a TensorFlow job, MPI, etc. Um, so that, that's what the user creates. And then Q would uh, abstract this um, particular job into a more generic object, which we call the workload. Uh, it's just an internal representation of, of the job so that Q can take decisions um, without having to, to, to know all the details of, of each job and to allow uh, custom integrations, right? So if um, if uh, you have a, your own CRD, Q, you just need to create a, a workload object for it, and then Q can, is able to, to schedule this job. So that's workload. And then, um, again, when you created a job, uh, you included a queue name. So this queue name, refers to what we call a local queue. Um, we call it local just because its namespace, uh, namespace was too long. So we went with local, uh, local queue. Um, so uh, yeah, that's, that's the object that jobs refer to. Uh, but then local queues are pretty much a hollow object. In reality, they are backed by a cluster queue, which is a non-namespace object. Um, and the cluster queues are the, the objects that actually contain quotas, uh, fair sharing settings, preemption, so on and so forth. So uh, that goes to the queue, to the cluster queue. Um, and then cluster queues can define resource flavors or yeah, the references resource flavors, which are all these different tiers of um, 
uh, either like um, models of GPUs, for example, or or uh, availability classes like again reservations on demand, uh, spot VMs, so on and so forth. These are all represented with resource flavors, and then classic use can be grouped in cohorts to provide fair sharing and borrowing uh, semantics. Um, so yeah, that, these are the objects that you uses. Any question here? Okay. Um, I'll move on into the news. Uh, well, uh, we just released 0 0.7 on Monday, if I remember correctly, uh, this Monday. Uh, and uh, But I wanted to also share uh, what we did in 0 0.6 because this audience might be new. Um, so the most exciting feature in this release is probably fair sharing. Um, I imagine a lot of you are familiar with DRF uh, dynamic, sorry, dominant resource fairness. Um, there was a, uh, there has been a strong demand for, for DRF within Q, so that's the new feature. Um, new in 0 0.6 and improved throughout 0 0.7 is multi-queue, which is the dispatcher worker architecture for multi-cluster support. Um, we, it currently supports jobs, Kubernetes jobs and job set. Uh, we will be working on uh, expanding the, the, the integrations here, um, but that's all where we are today. Um, another another feature, I think this was introduced, introducing 0 0.5 actually, the, the, that's the integration with provisioning request from cluster out scaler, which allows uh, the atomic scale ups uh, for jobs. Um, then what is new are the integrations for groups of plain pods and ray cluster. Uh, yeah, so in 0 0.6, I'm sorry, in 0 0.5, we introduced support for single pods. In 0 0.6, we introduced support for groups of pods. Um, and um, yeah, a lot of work went into the the 0 0.7 release to uh, make this as scalable as possible. Um, and um, this, uh, again, involved not just work in queue. Uh, we, we were running our scale tests and we eventually uh, figured that queue stopped being the bottleneck and Kubernetes was the bottleneck. Uh, so we went ahead and fixed the cube scheduler to be able to handle these uh, huge amounts of uh, gated gated pods um, for to allow the queue integration to work nicely. Um, so yeah, that's that's the scale improvements. Um, it's also new in 0 0.7 is the new queue plugin for kubectl. Um, it allows you to um, create create cluster queues, create queues. Uh, uh, with a CLI, but also list. I think list was probably the the biggest limitation in just using bare kubectl because you cannot filter per per cluster queue or you cannot filter um, 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 active. Or I mean, running jobs versus non-running jobs and um, um or finished jobs uh, all of this this uh these things uh are hard to do with kubectl so the plugin hopefully will simplify the uh, that experience um yeah so we're very much looking for feedback on on the the cli uh, because that's um i guess that's the feature that hasn't been uh, used yet. Uh, it's uh, fairly new. Um, the uh, 
Other aspect is the uh, visibility API. This was introduced in 0 0.6. The visibility API allows us to export some uh, insights into the internals of Q. Uh, uh, we use it for the CLI, for example. It can also be used with dashboards and things like that. Um, namely, the primary feature here is the ability to, to tell where in the queue, in which position in the queue each job is. So where it's first or 10th or position 100 and so on and so forth. Um, and we, we have this visibility both for queues, I mean for local queues and for cluster queues. Mm, next, I'll expand on fair sharing, multi-queue and provisioning request. Uh, but if you have questions about anything else, here I can take can take any questions. It's a very quiet uh, audience today, but I'm sure they will have more questions after. Just a quick question on the Ray part because the, the community I'm in um, has uh, quite some integration with Dask as well. Is this something that has passed through the requests to also integrate with the uh, the Dask framework in the same way you're doing with Ray? Is there any specifics there? Um, sorry, which framework? Dask. I'll, I'll put it in the in the chat. OK. It's it's mm, mostly I... for Python. I'm sure Clement will back me up on this, uh, on this thought. <laughs> uh, I'll put here. The... Yeah, I mean, actually, yeah, that was a question I wanted to keep for the end, but maybe I'll um, just uh, ask it now. Um, so uh, Dask is basically, a, I don't know, like a, an interface uh, the, between, you know, what researchers typically, they write like their analysis code and so on, and then the jobs need to be submitted to some batch system, right? So then there are um, basically plugins available for um, like the classical uh, batch systems such as like slurm h condor and so on um and and um what lots lots of people are yeah and that makes a lot of things uh you know very easy to use um so i was also actually wondering um uh, if uh, how researchers are or, or, like what's your experience with um, how they interact um with um q like do they actually use like the 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 uh, Kubernetes or the uh, Q um, API, or are there some some um, other um, um, ways of interacting with this besides like the um, the CLI and then the API, API directly, or like some kind of wrappers or so? Um, so Q started as a, what I would call a lightweight project. It was supposed to be an internal low-level component that for the most part didn't care about user experience. It was about scheduling. Um, so um, that's where that's where we started. And because of that, most of our first adopters are, um, let's call them platform developers. Uh, so they they have their own CLIs, their own uh, dashboards, and they used uh, queue as a as a low level component within their infrastructure. So, and I think for the most part, that that's how uh, researchers uh, end up using queue. Uh, rather, like they don't use queue; <laughs> they use these particular systems, and then the systems use queue as a as a building block. Um, now, with the, the CLI here, we are taking the first step towards uh, bridging the gap uh, of, of directly serving end users. Um, so th that's one effort. Uh, the Q plugin doesn't, doesn't include today uh, job creation. Uh, we are actually starting a, a sub project uh, to to simplify the job creation experience um, so that uh, users uh, I guess end users don't have to write YAMLs 
um, that's um, in the works. And actually, uh, we have a presentation tomorrow. My, my colleague has a presentation tomorrow in the Kubernetes working group batch for this, uh, this uh, job creation CLI. Um, did I miss any part of your question? No, thank you. Uh, I think that's, that's uh, pretty much complete. Um, yeah. Yeah, so I think it'd be interesting to actually um, see how easily it could be integrated with um, Dask. Um, yeah, because, because that, that would make it very easy um, to use. Because, um, I mean, basically in, in Dask, people now, when they use it, they basically just say, I need, I don't know, 100 uh, workers with like one core each and and uh, you know two gigabytes of ram or so and then um, they would be reserved for them and they just basically send the jobs and they get them back right and the, the scheduling is is done by the batch system which would you know in this case be a queue um so that, uh, and that makes it really easy to use but yeah thank you i mean i think that um, this was some work needed but i think it'd be great to have um just by quickly looking at dusk uh i kind of see a parallel with Metaflow. Um, are you familiar with it? Yeah, yeah, yeah to some extent, yes. Yeah. Um, so um, Metaflow also has kind of like decorators for Python functions that uh, allow the user to send those computations to the cloud, well, to Kubernetes or other other um, systems, and <clears throat> they got it working through job sets basically they don't they don't integrate as far as i can tell they don't integrate metaflow with q they just create job sets and because job sets are integrated with q uh the queuing comes uh pretty much automatically maybe they have like just like an annotation for uh like the queue name but that, that's the extent that it, that it goes to uh, in terms of integration. <clears throat> um, and so in general, my recommendation to anybody trying to integrate with Q, uh, I mean, for system, uh, uh, for ecosystem developers, my first recommendation is try to use job set or job. <clears throat> if you can model your steps as job set or jobs, uh, then there is nothing else to do. Um, but if that's limiting, uh, of course you can still integrate directly using the the job framework that we that we have, um, uh, or send uh, send uh, feature requests to Jobset to uh, figure out why you cannot use Jobset um, as it is today. Uh, actually, the job set team is currently looking for feedback for the next release, so that's it's a good moment as well to to ask for features there. Um, so yeah, that would be my recommendation. Okay, yeah, thank you. Um, okay, uh, move on. So for sharing, um, I think I'm given the audience. I I think most people are familiar with DRF. Um, but basically, uh, first sharing is the uh, ability to uh, equally distribute um, the usage uh, of of resources among among different teams, or in in, in the case of queue queues. Um, so, yeah, in the context of of queue. Uh, there is one difference with, I guess, standard DRF. And it, the, the difference is that we only uh, share and use the resources. Uh, what, does that, what does this mean? Uh, let's look at this example here. Um, we have three, three cluster queues in this example. Um, each of them has uh, um, a quota 